In this coding exercise, we are going to build a course tracker. And this is something that I've had to implement for DevCamp, and I thought it would be good to work through what is essentially a workflow system. So for what we have here is we have a class, or I should say we need to create a class called completion. It takes in two arguments. One is the number of guides. And so this would be, if you think about a online programming course, this is gonna be the number of guides that a student goes through. And then it takes in the total that the student has completed. So right here, what we have is a situation where if you take these values and you divide them, then you're gonna get your percentage, just very basic math. And so if you come down and you run the completed percentage method that we have right here, so that tells us completed percentage as another method we need to implement, we're gonna get 0.55 or the equivalent of 55%. Now moving down a couple lines, we need to have a method called mark complete. And what this method is going to do is it is going to update the total completed count. And then if you come down and run the exact same code, notice how this code right here is the exact same code as on line six, but the expectation is that this is gonna be 56% or 0.56, where this one was 0.55. The only difference is we press the mark complete or we pass the mark complete method to this instantiation of the class. So that is what we're essentially gonna be doing is building a workflow system that can dynamically track how a student progresses through a course. So if I come down here, I know the first thing I need to do is create a completion class. Inside of it, we're going to build an initialize method, and I always have a hard time spelling initialize. I believe that's right. And so with initialize, we're going to pass in a few arguments. You can see that we need to have the number of guides with a colon, and this is the way that you can have named arguments like we have there on line nine and then the total completed followed by a colon. And then inside of this, I'm going to give the number of guides stored as an instance variable. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the total complete. And if you're wondering if you've ever seen me do this before, the reason why we do this is because when we store this as an instance variable, it is available inside other methods. So the initialize method is great, but all it is going to do is store it in these values. And if you don't do this, so say that you simply took in these values, but you didn't store them in a instance variable, then you're not going to be able to access these values in other methods unless you implement some other way of doing it. So this is a way of getting access to that data. Now we know that we need a completed percentage method. So let's build that. I'm gonna be, it's gonna be completed percentage. It's not gonna take any arguments. And the reason why it's not gonna take any arguments is because it is going to grab these values. So it's gonna take the total completed value and divide it by the number of guides. Now, technically, you may think that this would work, but let's take a really quick look. I'm gonna copy this, paste it in, and if I call C dot com, uh, completed percentage, you're gonna see something a little bit odd with this math. Now, you should expect 0 0.55 to be the answer, but if we run this, you can see that the answer is zero. And the reason for this is because right now this is going to do integer division. And that is a little bit of a problem because we need fractions. So we have to cast this as a float. And just for good measure, I'm gonna cast this one as a float as well, just so we're dealing with two decimals. And now if I run this again, then you can see that now the value is 0 0.55 and this is working properly. Now we only have one other method we need to implement, which is that mark complete method. So I'm gonna say mark complete. And here it's pretty basic. All we need to do is a total completed and we just need to increment it 
by one. So anytime that you go to and you run the mark complete method, it is going to change the status. It's going to change the total completed, which then is going to have a domino effect and change this completed percentage result. So let's come down here and I'm going to call mark complete except I'm going to also call it a few times. So instead of just calling it once like we're doing in the test, let's actually do it a few times just so we can see the value after we've ran this four times. So if I run this now, come down, you can see that the expectation now is that the student is 59% of the way completed with the course. They started out at 55, but they completed one, two, three, four courses, which updates it, and now the value is at 59%. So this is working very nicely. And now if we run the test, we have RSpec March 7th running this. One example, zero failure. So all of this is working perfectly. Our tests are passing. And now you know how to build a dynamic class that can take in values and then update them on the fly.